Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the head of content at Informa Farmer Intelligence Insights Products. That's Script, Invivo, Pink Sheet, and Generics Bulletin. Uh, we're here at the JP Morgan and Biotech Showcase meetings. Uh, this is an opportunity start every start of every year where the pharmaceutical industry, the biotech industry, and other stakeholders, including investors, get together, review what happened the previous year, and also what's going, you know, this, what's hot. Uh, for the uh, the following year, in 2018, the biotech industry raised globally from venture capital sources 23 billion dollars. The majority of that money went into cancer, and yet the CNS space, and in particularly neurodegeneration, uh, an area that we know is a big big problem, uh, is getting a much uh, smaller share. I'm, I'm joined by Dirk Bayer, who's uh, the CEO of uh, Asseneuron. Uh, which is a Swiss-based company in the neurodegenerative space. So, Dirk, it's, neurodegeneration is a, 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 a pretty hard space. How do you even sort of you know, get a share of voice from, from VCs and investors in the first place? Yeah, I think you, you're really right to say so. It's a tough space because your proof of concept models or the clinical trials take a long time. Um, so the way we, we did this, the first thing is, you know, we're going back a couple of years in our company history. So we had a Series A uh, in 2015. And that time, you know, we presented very convincing preclinical data in, in a disease model. And then we also had a very nice path forward, how are we going to develop this drug in, in patients? Because, you know, we are focusing on what's called tauopathy, so that's a protein called tau aggregating in the brain, killing the neurons. And you can find that in Alzheimer's, but you also find it in a large number of rare diseases. And our strategy is really to go for the rare diseases. And that's what convinced investors, because you have a smaller trial, you, you can define this much better than really going into these big monster trials for Alzheimer's, for example, you know. OK, so the Series A financing. So who, who, who did you get on board? So at that time, the lead was Sofinova Partners in Paris. Then we had uh, Merck Ventures, Kurmer, SR1 and JJDC, so the Johnson Johnson Venture Arm. So really good syndicate, an exciting syndicate, you know, premier European VCs, sure, you know. Sure, okay, so as you, as you mentioned, sort of the proof of concept is sort of fairly difficult to, uh, you know, identify. So you mentioned you had some sort of preclinical data. Yeah. What exact, could you be a bit more specific about what was it that you were able to present that persuaded those you know, serious blue chip investors to part with their money. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. So essentially what we did is we took a transgenic mouse model that overproduces tau and forms these tangles. They're called neurofibular tangles. You find them in all the patients of tau opacies, and we could efficiently prevent the formation of them in the mouse model. So that was a really exciting benchmark because this is what other alternative therapies as well have been showing. You know, like tau antibodies, you know, other people have progressed into the clinic. However, we have a small molecule, so we can give a tablet, you know, and this was the key point because then the path is clear. You know, we had to go through GRP talks, we had to go through phase one, which we have done now with success. But it was, you know, the key experiment was that showing that in the mice you can modulate the pathology which plays the key role in these diseases. So, so it's interesting. So, um, in terms of a target, so that aggregation of, 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 of tau, is that, you know, do you have evidence that actually that's what's causing the problem or is it just a, is it not possible that it's just a sort of a, you know, a, a, an innocent bystander? Yeah, I think let's the target again to specify, we have an enzyme inhibitor and indirectly we modulate tau aggregation because that enzyme usually clips off a post for uh, modification, which is a sugar residue. And by inhibiting it, what happens is that tau carries more sugars and doesn't aggregate anymore. So it's not a stoichiometric inhibitor, just to make sure when we start. So does tau aggregation do something? I think there's good evidence now with so-called PET tracers, they can stain tangles in patients. And there is a good correlation with the number of tangles you find, so, and with the progression of the disease as well. So you have the quantitative correlation. So the more tau someone has, the worse the person is off in the clinic. And there's also a spatial correlation. So if you go in Alzheimer's, we have the tangles in the cortex, hippocampus, we have memory problems, we have cognition problems. If you go to a disease called progressive supranuclear palsy, we have a motor phenotype like Parkinsonisms, and guess where the tangles are? They're in the midbrain where you control these processes. 
So there is a good correlation in two ways, and that's why we think these tangles are actually causative. Right, and the and and the the molecules that you have um, are they sort of disease modifying? I do they disentangle the? They will not disentangle. They will put be prototypical disease modifier. So we will provide uh, prevent further buildup. So essentially, what you see, you the decline slows. You know that's the expectation in the clinical trial. Okay, so uh, going forward in, in in a clinical trial, so you know what what are the sort of the what are the endpoints that you'll be able to? So we have to go to the specific disease. So it's progressive supranuclear palsy, and people have developed a very sophisticated PSP rating scale. So it's a combined rating scale which asks you know how many falls did you have in that month? You know how much time did you spend doing your normal business and your normal life? Um, and that's very well validated. You know, there's a large number of trials and also natural history data where we exactly know that in a year's time, a patient will progress by 10 points up. And we use that as the primary endpoint. You know. Right, okay, so um, either what the length of time it takes them to get 10 points. Yeah, or... exactly. We, 10 points is disability, so we want to decrease. Essentially, we want to go from 10 points increase to seven or five. You know, that's the idea there, yeah. And so what, what is sort of the current status of, of, of your programs at the moment? So the program has completed a phase one and it's now ready for phase two, three and, and has often designation in the US. So essentially we will get regulatory support as we move along. And for rare disease, the idea is really to start right away with a pivotal trial that could lead to an approval. So we're skipping phase two, hopefully. That's the idea. Right, okay. And do you have the, the financial resources to be able to... So we will be fundraising actively uh, this year to really put everything into place to build up the company and also fully capitalize on, on moving the, this drug maybe into multiple clinical trials as well, not just one. Right, okay. Yeah. So that, that would be a Series B round? Series B round, you know, targeted in the middle of the year, something like that, yeah. And uh, do you have a sort of a number of how much you think you'd need to raise? Yeah, we need to have enough to move forward. You know, I think I cannot get, reveal the exact number here, but I think it should be a reasonable number to allow the company to execute the clinical plans, you know. And I mean, J, I guess J JJDC is um, not necessarily European. A lot of your investors are European, even yeah. SR1, yeah. although obviously being the GSK yeah. uh, corporate venture arm. Are you looking to broaden your investor base? Yeah, I think we're definitely looking to get uh, US investors on board. You know, and we also have done, expanded the company in the US now. We have an office in Cambridge, Massachusetts. You know, we hired a chief medical officer there. So the plan is really to get a broader investor base, you know, also with respect to geography, you know, very clear, you know. So you're, this meet in San Francisco, as, as I mentioned in the introduction, the whole of yeah. industry is here. Do, who are you, um, you know, reaching out to uh, at, at, at this moment in time? So I think we're doing a dual track, you know. Obviously, we have some very interesting data in a field that's hot for pharma. You know, there has been some interesting deals recently, you know, in the tau field. Um, and we are speaking to pharma. And then the most important thing for us, however, is to, for us is to finance. So we were looking to talk to quite a number of investors, you know and also hopefully get those discussions going uh, after JP Morgan as well, because you know, here it's like speed dating, you meet someone for 30 minutes and you know, after that, you, know, you see how it materializes into CDAs and further discussions. You know? Okay, well, uh, I wish you luck on your, on your endeavors. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Cheers.